The reason I first came to Ukraine, it's pretty simple. I didn't come here intending to live here um, for as many years as I have, but I came because I was actually in late 2013, I had recently moved to Moscow. And I'm a news photographer by, by background, and when the Maidan protests in Kiev started, I was living sort of in, a, in the region. It was part of the territory that I would think is where I would be covering as a journalist. And so um, I started coming here during Maidan because I lived uh, relatively close by. For me, it was like the perfect opportunity to explore the things that I am interested in and go to places and see them for myself and really try to, as best as I can, understand what is reality and try to, you know, visually communicate that to people. Um, and I hope to that by doing so, then people will be better informed, they will make better political decisions, will either elect the right people or the policies that are made by the people seeing my images will somehow reflect the, the reality and, and produce a better outcome. Um, I think after my experience of working in eastern Ukraine, I, am, I find that that is rarely what happens. Um, I think it's super important to be out there as a journalist. You know, it's often referred to as the first draft of history. I think that's absolutely accurate. I think it's super important to be in those places, at those key moments, documenting what is happening. But I don't necessarily believe that it means that because this picture is in the paper tomorrow and seen by millions of people, that doesn't necessarily mean anything is going to change. And I mean, I had the experience of like having my picture on the front page of the paper day after day after day. And where are we now? Like, I, it, didn't, it didn't stop a war, really. So I look at it now much more long term, I guess. Uh, my thinking is about historians who are going to look back on this conflict and have these primary documents to refer to, um, you know, 50 or 100 years from now, being able to somehow learn from and, and understand this. And I think, it, I think these things play out on a much longer term scale than what we generally think. An event like Maidan, it's just so inherently visual in its, in its quality that, um, you know, sort of as a photographer, of course that's something that you pay attention to and notice. And it was going to give me a chance to sort of use photography in a way that I feel like is, it's, it excels. I would be able to sort of enjoy the process of being a photographer and at the same time be able to um, sort of document something in a way that I didn't necessarily see being done yet. I don't enjoy um, being in those situations uh, like near the front line where you're actually in danger. Um, it, all, it all sounds good in theory until that moment when like there's bullets flying and you're sitting there thinking like there is not one single photograph I can imagine taking right now that would justify getting shot, you know, <laughs> there is no reason for me to take that risk. It's remarkable that you can be standing right in the center of Donetsk and have absolutely no idea that there is a war nearby. Because Donetsk is a frontline city. The war is within the city boundaries. Um, if you're standing right in the middle of the city, it's maybe five kilometers from, from active fighting. You can hear it, but you can absolutely go about your day um, and, and sort of forget about it unless something reminds you. It's absurd in a way, like the, I think well, war in general is, and that's sort of one characteristic that uh, has surprised me. The way, in, as a result, I guess you can also finally calibrate, you know, what level of risk you want to take by going there, um, or going, you know, on any side of the front line. There, there are particular places where it's well known that this, this checkpoint, this block post, whatever this. Uh, this place gets shelled, they shoot it. this is a thing that happens here, but if you go one kilometer that way, or you know, maybe a hundred meters that way, it's different and you're gonna be okay. Like you can choose exactly how much risk you wanna take. And there are um, obviously um, 
you know, on a on near daily basis, soldiers get wounded or killed. Um, civilians probably every every week, if not multiple times a week. So, I mean, it's not 100% predictable, but uh, those I think are often concentrated in pretty particular areas. If it were me in that situation, like, there's no contest, like, we're humans and the point, if you're going to do this work for any reason other than, like, thinking it's somehow going to make a positive difference in the world, like, you're doing the wrong thing, so, um, but yes, it's, it is a, a tension between what is the harm and what I'm doing, am I invading someone's privacy, and to what extent is that experience sort of relevant to the extent that there's some almost like societal uh, right to at least explain and show what it is that is happening and I mean in my experience people sort of intuitively grasp that as well if, if especially at a moment when things are really in crisis they realize that what they're what they're living through has relevance and that people need to see what is happening We, we move on really quickly from stories. It doesn't mean the story resolved itself, it just means that something else was, you know, brighter and uh, like moths to a flame, you know, like we just like changed our attention. Um, so again, that's sort of like something I'm conscious of and one of the reasons why I've, I've stayed here, uh, despite the fact that there's a lot less work as a journalist here than there was a few years ago, because I think it's, it's uh, it's sort of irresponsible to like invest so much into a story and then when you know forces beyond your control have sort of decided like eh, it's not it's not really interesting um, that you just what, give up and like go do something else that somebody thinks is more interesting rather than really see a story through to the end so um, yeah I've tr I try to sort of push back against that and that's why I'm that's why I'm still here